And on today's episode, we have Petronella Nonzikelelo Chuma, actress extraordinaire in the building, where I think I might feel somebody's energy oh, already calling to me. Oh, <laughs> How are you? So good to see you. So good to see you. Thank you for coming. Pleasure. <laughs> All right. Welcome yes. to Wine Wednesdays with Sishiwe. Mm -hmm. I have a special gift for you. Mm -hmm. A glass of Siwela Grace 2020. The Enthusiast Collection. Mm. Now, I haven't tried this myself, so we're about to discover it together. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, you want to try that? Yeah. Cheers. I want to toast. toast. I want to toast you. Okay. You are one of my favorite actors. I think what you bring onto the screen, the sincerity, <laughs> the depth, the... Like, it's every time you approach a character, you become mm. them in a way that you want to honor the truth. Yes, that's, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> Since I spoke to you about coming on the show, yeah. that's what I was trying to like, find out what is it about you. Mm -hmm. You honor the truth. Yeah. To honoring the truth. Okay. <laughs> In the eyes. In the eyes, <laughs> otherwise. Mm. Mm. That is good, it's rich. It's very nice. It's rich. See why I did the things. It's so smooth. Mm. Let's go. <laughs> I want to play a game with you. Okay. <laughs> Pick a hand. <laughs> this one. <laughs> now you know you don't pick the wrong hand. <laughs> why? <laughs> Where? Okay. Okay, go. Given the choice. Mm -hmm between a role that will change your life, mm -hmm. that will make all your dreams come true. Okay. The, oh, uh, there you just <laughs> need to write. I need to for that. What? Your dream role, whatever, okay. whatever role you've like always yes. wanted to play. Sure. That role. Sure. And happiness. What would you choose? How are you doing this? You chose your dream role. Okay, whatever. It does bring me to the question. Um, creativity, art, don't always go in alignment with happiness and balance and feeling well. Okay. Because you think, okay, I've, I've wanted this all my life. As soon as I have yeah. this, I'm going to be happy. But what if those things that we want don't make us happy? Artists are mm -hmm. known to be prone to depression, mm -hmm. to anxiety. Mm -hmm. So the game that I was playing with you is perhaps a metaphor for what happens with a lot of artists where a lot of people um, fall into very depressive episodes where they want to do great things with their art, but uh, they've got these dark places within them. Sure. So... Given the choice between making art and being happy, there's a um, Silver Mount Zion song. Um, <laughs> I used to be, and I still am into uh, alternative rock. Yeah. And uh, Silver Mount Zion is one of my favorite bands, and there's a song that they have, um, and one of the lines in the song is, do happy people make good art? And I, that's actually a Ooh. question I have for you. Do you think happy people make good art? <laughs> that is so deep. Do happy people, people make art? Good art. Good art. I don't think so. So you think something must be broken inside Definitely. of you? Because you have to go there. Definitely. <clears throat> so it's like this whole journey of life, right? It's like it has to go through its roller coaster. I need if we're happy, it's fine. But funny enough, it's everything in what we go through that tests a character yet mm. where we find who we are what we're really about what we really want and truly like everything we go through is a test 
to what we think and believe and all of that. Mm. When I like, if let's say in Pilo it writes, I need getting tandas as mm. much as I would. If everything is going bad, it's like it's 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 it's, a, it's fucked up, right? Sorry <laughs> for swearing, but it's messed up. Uguti, um, we draw ourselves closer to ourselves and spirituality mm. and God, our ancestors, when things are not going okay. It's, it's, it's just, it's messed up. That makes me wonder then, is art an, a desperate action? Is it an act of desperation? No. So within the art is where we truly find ourselves. It's in the darkness, I feel, that we find who we really are. That's what I think. Is that how you approach roles? I understand that for like someone who's creating for themselves, like if you're writing your own work, mm -hmm. or if you're a painter or photographer and you're the curator. Mm -hmm. But as an actor, mm -hmm. uh, I want to ask you this. Uh, a role is thrust upon you. Sure. Uh, do you approach roles yourself uh, through that lens of looking for where this person is broken or finding Where's their hurt place? I think for me, when I approach a role, it's like I read the script, and for me, it's about the first things that I pick up, the first instincts, the first feelings. Um, we were speaking about this earlier on, and it's about being an empath. So for me, it's all about what is it that I pick up, the, the energy that I pick up from each character. I think that's where I'll say I'll go from. Wait. What kind of energy do you look for? Like what, 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 <clears throat> what draws you to a role? Or, or uh, rather, actually, uh, this is a better question. What uh, makes you turn down a role? To be honest, I can tell when the writer has invested time in the story. Mm. So for me, it's like, automatically, it's just like the cliches, whatever. I can tell from the writing immediately. That's what turns me off. Uguti, how something was written. That's what turns me off. Mm. And then... Um, do I believe in this truth? Mm. So you have to believe in it? I have to. Otherwise, I can't play it. Do you have to believe in the philosophy of the story? Or just the character? Both. I think both. I have to believe in both, definitely. What have been some of the most challenging roles you've played? For yourself as a human where you've had to like go home and go shit i don't know how to bring myself back mm. Clearly, it's been a lot. <laughs> I think it's like it, 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 it's 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 tricky because there's been like depending on what I've shot, there's been different storylines, right? So bring me back. Are you one of those actors that can go to work? Yeah. Do the work. Break down. If the character's broken, be broken, mm -hmm. and then as soon as the rep. <clears throat> put your clothes back on and then carry on with your life or do you feel shadows of your characters no definitely because i'm asking you this because mina i, I, I don't know how to let go and until i'm done done, done until done. Rap, day. rap rap otherwise this yeah. person is always with me no, their but, pain is always with but it me. makes sense right it makes sense for that character to be with you until you are done mm. and then once you are done that's the tricky part right Uguti, we don't have someone to go to and talk mm. to and let go mm. but um if i'm very honest with you <laughs> i shot something about three weeks ago right i was shooting every day and all of that um 
I am Tish. I am a hardworking actor. I know this part. <laughs> I like listen. I work right, but on the flip side of that, is that I can chill. So when I'm done, what I do is I will chill for the next two weeks, or however it is, however long that I need to just sit and go mm. back to self. So mm. for me, what it, what that is is that I'll binge watch on films, on series, reality TV, mm. and but then yes, I'll be a mom and all of that other stuff. But it's just being with self, and like like I always like like will say to you, when are you always like busy body, like you're always on the move and everything? But I literally chill. I am the queen of like chill out. I can chill and sit and watch. Netflix, watch whatever it is, and I'll do nothing. And I feel guilty. Oh, I'm not being proactive. But that is actually my mm. let down and let go of not doing anything. And that's me saying, okay, let me come back to self. No, I've never been to therapy, like after each role that I've done. And I've played, he I've played hectic roles, <laughs> the English. I've played hectic roles before and stuff. I've never gone for therapy for any of those things. But for me, it's like, let me do what Mina self I know that I love doing, and that is just going back, chilling in bed the whole week and just, and watching Netflix or whatever so, it is. Of good report, you, <laughs> how did you come back, snap back from that? That was hectic. That, <laughs> that you was were hectic. hanging upside down <laughs> naked. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and I was 22, I was 22, what did I do? I came back, I shot whatever else, and yeah. I think for me personally, it's coming back to my life. That's what brings mm. me back to um, whatever else, family. Mm. When, the, when kids be like, mama, mama, whatever. And it's like, yo, you can't be thinking of Nolita at that time. Nolita. Nolita, I'm doing it. Nolita, Eastern Cape. I'm doing it, Nolita. No, Nimshia, pa. And so then, that's what it is. So, does family, your rootedness in family, help with your creative process? What did you say? Your children? I come from a very creative family. Like, my family, we have artists. So, but <laughs> I am the first person in my family that has made it to the scale because... Um, as we know, you cannot just be an artist and thrive and survive in South Africa. So, Absolutely. So my uncle, who was an artist himself, was part of like such a legend, legendary. You? Can we take it back a bit? My artist. Okay. My uncle. <laughs> my uncle. Okay. My uncle was an artist who was part of like such a huge hip hop group, right? Oh, yeah. hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> Do we know him? I don't know. Do you like underground rap? Uh, no, I only know Oremiesta. Base mental platform. Yeah, so my uncle was part of that whole stuff. But my uncle was such, like, artist, but had to, like, be a person my that dad. worked in corporate, right? And all of that stuff. So it's like we have a lot of artists in my family, dancers, singers, and all of that. But I am the one person that was, like, you know. And so now the little ones are, like you know, being inspired and whatever. But I really, I do come from an artistic family. And do you find that people around you get inspired by what you do? They are. They are, because, like, I believed in this thing. And so mm. let's do it. <laughs> That's incredible. What made you do that? Like, why not become a call center agent? I'm not saying... <laughs> we're going to cut that part out, because there's nothing wrong with being a call center agent. Don't mind me. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> but wrong. Oh, wow. I'm saying, what made you pursue your dreams? Because being an artist in Sauda is not easy. So you've got to have a fucking driving force. What is that thing that propels you? I don't know. Let me tell you. Tish, I've never had a plan B. Like, I was introduced to acting at the age of seven. Shop. I'm like, cool, I'm going to do acting. And 
Remember back in the days in the 90s, Umis South Africa, Umis Universe was such a big thing. Yes. Every household watched Miss South Africa. Oh, Miss that Universe. night, yes. And so my grandmother raised me. And she thought, Uguti, I would be part of Miss South Africa. And that was never the thing for me. And I knew from the age 11, 12, Uguti, I wanted to be an actor. I just, you know, so from the age of seven, I was in introduced to acting. Um, 11, 12, I knew acting that this is what I'm going to be. I never had a plan B. I never had a plan C. I was not the most smartest person in school. In fact, I was very smart, but I was not interested. Mm. I was like drama you all the way. I was an A plus student in English over Banbani, but like I was bad in math, your sciences, all of that. But I was just like, um, I was, it was the one thing I was sure of. And I know it sounds weird and everything, but it makes me like I, I've had to learn to understand. But like when I come across Umuntu on a 22, 23, I'm like, no, I don't know what I want to be. It was always weird for me because I'm like, you always knew. I always knew. But now that I'm older, I can understand that even when you're 23, you can actually change to say, yeah, so there was never a plan B, a plan A. So the reason I keep going is because... That's all it is. That's all I know. That's all, I, that's all it is. And that's all I'm passionate about. And right now, it might be from an actor's perspective. And then <laughs> it's just been like, like just annoying me. But it's like, babes, it's time. It's time to come over to the other side. Which other side? It's time to start telling stories. As in, as a director? Director, producer, whatever it is. Really? From, for the longest time. Oh. But it's like, why am I not doing it? Because I'm scared. It's because I'm like... What are you afraid of? Being bad. Were you afraid of being bad as an actor when you first started out? No. So why this thing? Because I'm dead. <laughs> so you should know. So you should have all the answers. So yeah, yeah. So I'm dead and I'm like, it's like if whatever it is that I'm going to release, it has to be like on some prolific level. Do you know what I mean? It's like it has to be like smart. Do you give yourself be... room to learn? Like to... you can't be prolific at grade one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I am very excited to hear this. I would love to see you as a director because I have, just from interacting with you, I know you have an eye and I know you have a vision and I a do. soul. I do. When it comes to story. <laughs> yeah. So you would do incredible there, but I would hate to see you not take certain choices just because you're scared. Do you know Halle Berry? made her first film at 55. Yeah. Oh my God, and was it not brilliant? I love that film. Let me tell you, it's like, this is another thing that I'm learning, Tish, is that, yes, I am called, I know for, for a fact, Uguti, I'm called to be a director, I'm called to be all these other things, but I'm not gonna, like, there's, there's this pressure, Uguti, we are, we're running out of time. Um, yes. um, um, is ahead of us. Utishiwe, fest, fest. Utishiwe, Everybody wants to be the first. Utishiwe the first is already La Paya, is already writing, producing, directing. Mm. And I'm just like, no, I can do this at my own time. That's interesting um, because I actually want to ask you, what is this thing about black culture that makes us so, it's like we have an anxiety mm -hmm. around creativity, around art, where they can, pers first of all, only be one in the room. Yeah. And if there's not one in the room, then I must be the first in the room. Um, I don't want to tell family secrets online, <laughs> but as black people, we have that problem. Yeah. And I've seen it play out. Yeah. In my last 18 years in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, I look fly. <laughs> I've been 18 years. years. Yeah, motherfucker. I, I may look dope, <laughs> but yeah, I've been working for 18 years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like that. Only yeah. one of us. And if it's not one of us, then only me. Yeah. What is that about black people? Is it only black people? 
I don't care about being the first what, being the last what. Like, the fact that we're even talking about that is a bit weird. I'm just like, um, let's op operate on a level where we don't he even have to think, oh, Guti, shit, that was, oh. I feel you. Like, if I'm making a glass, mm -hmm. like, that's my art, that's my craft. Yes. This is what I do for a living. Yes. I make glasses. That's all I want to do. I just want to make this glass. Mm -hmm. Why can't I focus on this? Why must I think, oh, there's a glass maker next door. <laughs> and I wish that artists in this country, and I don't know if it works the same way the world over, mm -hmm. would just focus on their glass. Focus on your craft. Make yourself a better craftsman. Like for me, that's what I've been doing. And you get a lot, and I understand there's a lot of outside pressure, especially with arts. There's like a, a blurry line, uh, mm. and I'd like to engage you on that, yeah. between making art and being an entertainer. And there's a blurry line between that where you have to please the fans. What do you mean entertainer? <laughs> Sorry. Um, in this sense, I mean, oh, Petronilla, <laughs> we love you. Okay. As opposed to, yeah. you got no ratings, mm -hmm. no awards, no nothing but you gave a stellar performance. Mm -hmm. So what matters? You're an artist. You gave a stellar performance. You gave the performance of your life, mm -hmm. but no accolades. Uh, no fans came to the party. What matters? Here's the truth, right? From my perspective, is that um, the truth is that all of us, we do... Every human wants to feel appreciated. I mean, that's the truth. Like whether I'm absolutely no, 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 no. It, it's it's a fact. I mean, um, but right now in South Africa, if I'm being very honest, a lot of my respect goes to the theatre actors mm. because those are the actors. I respect everybody. <laughs> no disclaimers necessary. This is a safe space, everybody. This is a safe I, space. I respect everybody. <laughs> I, I do. Um, but my thing is, I really respect South, um, South African theatre actors because, man, they don't get enough props. Absolutely. So here's the thing. When I studied acting, acting, and if you find acting at 25, at 30, fine, sharp, I, it's cool, I don't mind. But what I'm saying is that <sighs> acting started way back whenever in theater. You cannot love acting if you do not understand and have theater. an appreciation with theater, right? I was born in theater. I started off as a theater actor and then made it into film and television. So, to me, it is the most saddest thing in South Africa. Uguti, man, we have phenomenal theater actors that are not even recognized or appreciated. I think one place in the world that's been able to do that successfully is the UK. Yes! Where... Sorry. Where, oh, you studied <laughs> no, there. No, I have to clap. <laughs> and I watched, um, so in school, we would always go to England and whatever, to the West End and watch all these plays and whatever. So for me, I really loved watching, my favorite play to watch at the West End was Blood Brothers. That was like most amazing. So like there was musical theaters about Lion King and everything, but I realized, oh, what's it? I'm not interested in the whole musical and don't own it. Mm. I'm interested in the drama and stuff. So West End, and that's this is what I love about the UK, as you're saying. UK, you don't just rock mm. up and wake up and say, Wuti, Everyone's I, classically Wuti trained. By actor. You're classically Alemba. trained. And South Africa has this thing where anybody can be an actor. Yeah. Which is good and bad, right? Has its pros and cons? What do you think? I, I can get it. I can get it. Because, unfortunately... As much as I would love for all of us to go to school with yes, yes, and study. I just think that acting is a craft. That's my thing. And um, it is. I, I didn't study six years in drama. 
So no, I, 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 I am no, I. I am in no place to place any judgment on like anything can happen to anyone at any time. That's the thing. Exactly. And you could be someone walking down the street and someone sees you and sees something in your eyes. I'm that type of director. Uh -huh. I'm a director and a producer myself. Yeah. So if I see you on the side of the street and I can see a story in your eyes, uh -huh. I will cast you same time. Yeah. And no one can tell you, Guti, no, you don't have a degree in acting. What is it that I gave off that said Nolita? Please help. Can we understand? Like, can I look closer? Directors can feel things. What, 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 what Directors did Nolita feel here? things. Um, something, something. I get you. We don't have to get into it now, but because um, directors feel things the same way that you. you were saying when About you read a script, sure. you feel something drawing towards you. When a director sees a person, they feel something drawn towards them. That's why, like many muses, I have muses. Like, uh -huh. I only work with the same actor. I work with the same actor every, as a director. What? My favorite male actor, yeah. Ebenezer Dibakwan. Ebenezer. Ebenezer will be in every film. Ebenezer because he's going to be in every film of mine. <laughs> it was a soul casting. I met him and I was like, you're going to be in every film of mine. What? And that's going to happen uh, along with other people that you know about. <laughs> but we ain't finna get into that. Uh, it ain't that type of show. <laughs> I love it. On the next show. But um, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is mm -hmm. this work is spiritual. This work is spiritual, and I think that's why it's so it it's so tricky for us to think about uh, these things uh, as an outsider and think about, oh, can non-actors... What is a non-actor? If I've ever felt an emotion, does that not make so me an can actor? can I ask you a question? Yeah. When people stop you on the road, but you, hey, babes, or whatever... No, they don't call you babes. But I'm cool. But I'm cool. Ha. Bonke. Come, hi, hello. Bonke. Oh, but he, sir. <laughs> Do you not see me? <laughs> ah, me <laughs> see me That's young poor. <laughs> Do you not? Me Come on. Of course, I'll never say this, <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> um, when they ask you, how to be, how do I become an actor? What do you say? What is your advice to that's a very good question. Um, I say, have you always wanted to act? Do you have something to say? And that's the most important question. That's deep. Do you have something to say? Because I think acting is about having something to say. Yes, it's a character that you put on, but it's never something you put on. It's always about you. Okay. Me, personally, I feel acting is always about you. And this is also based on the work of Stella uh, Adler and Uta Hagen. It's always about you that is where you draw your best work from. And what if you, you don't do? have something to say, you as a person, mm -hmm. then you can't act. If you just want to be on TV, mm, there's um, something that Uta Hagen says in the, uh, I can't remember which one of the books, but it's Uta Hagen. Mm -hmm. And uh, about acting mm -hmm. and it's how do you approach a character in a scene in a film in a story and what Uta says is where is the love in the scene always look for the love where is the love so even if you're going for an audition look for the love so even if the scene says oh I'm shouting at this person so uh, I get an audition side uh, a side is where uh, you just get one page um, of the audition. Uh, so, Tiwa Khaneng Ibe now. I could come there and just say, Ewena, uchola wabi, tusayak masimba. Which is what we see a lot of on South African television, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what uh, Uta suggests is, look for the love in the scene. So, if I'm angry at you, what is going to give depth to the scene other than love? If I love you, then the scene is complex. Then my saying, Fusek means something else. It doesn't have to be a love scene. If you're my older sister yeah. and you have never paid attention to me and you are always off running. Mm -hmm. So when I say, Fusek it's from that love. Where is the love in the scene? One lesson. <laughs> oh, guys, hi. I just it's gave so you a deep. free lesson. It's so 
deep. I'm within it. <laughs> I'm so within it. So that's why the work is important. So yeah. Someone had to teach me that. I have to I learn that every day. That, and that's that. another thing. That's another thing. As actors, we have to work every day. Um, I remember Akin, uh, the person yeah. who got me into acting. Yeah. Akin Montesor, um cast me in Man on Ground mm -hmm. when I was a shy little bird <laughs> and said, no, I will never be an actor, even though I knew that that was the one thing I wanted more than anything in the world. Yeah. And he was like, no, for sake. <laughs> Nothing bad. <laughs> You are the lead in my movie. <laughs> he literally, he made me the lead in his movie and I'd never acted before. I was like, no, but I'm scared. Yeah. And he was like, Mustin Benj, you're a brilliant actor. <laughs> and this is what he taught me. He did not say that, but he was. Uh, well, in another language, English. <laughs> he said, drummers yeah. practice every day. If you are a drummer, sure. every night sure. you'll hear the drummer upstairs. The actor is the actor. Tish, 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 the tish, actor tish, must tish. work. The actor must work. Artists need to work. Definitely. That is how you achieve creative excellence. You work at it every day. Guitarists be strumming. What do actors do? They wait for an audition. You can't wait for an audition. You can't. Even when you're not working. Do monologues. Be with story. Go into yourself. Find psychology. Do psychology shit. Like, find out what makes humans the way they are. For me, I am so lazy. <laughs> As every other actor. I am a pro procrastinator of note. I'm lazy. Like, Tish, remember what I said, man? Mm -hmm. I am a very hardworking <laughs> actor. No, 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 no. I am. But I don't want to lie to you. Like, I'm not for this work hard type of shit. <laughs> and fuck But the art. That. Don't you no. want to work hard for the art? Let me tell you. For myself. <laughs> you want a Netflix and chill. <laughs> My art is, if I can just usa, switch it off, and let it come to me, <laughs> that's what it is. I don't think that's how it works, baby it's girl. It's all right. It's all right. Baby it's girl, right. I don't think that's how it works. I know. I should be working on my acting. <laughs> I should be working I on my I said everybody own. should be working on their acting. I should be working <laughs> on my whatever. But, like, let me tell, tell you. Me. Nina, I, like, polar opposite, I'll work hard. But at the, at the other side of it, I'll switch it all off and just be like, me. And I think that's healthy. No, it's healthy for me. I think it's necessary. Sure. What would you, as an artist, recommend for people, regardless of what industry they're in, um, as an outlet for their pain creatively, as an outlet for their being, for their existence? doesn't even have to be pain. For their joy, what can people do to just tap into that part of soul that makes you feel okay? And do you have any such practices for yourself? I think by being some. <clears throat> I think for me right now, it's dependent on whatever it is that makes you happy or umunumund or whatever. But I think right now, doesn't matter what, how much money you have or as in Zindu. I think for me, it's truly about being content within self. Mm. Whatever that is. How do you reach that? I think not having to matter with you what your status is. Not having to worry about so many other things but just within. I think for me that's the most important thing. Yes. Yes. There's a lot. There's all this chaos and going this, on this around like, you. We want financial stability. Mm. We want all of these things for ourselves, our kids, or whatever, whatever. But um, I don't mm. know, like, like there's a lot happening, but there's a show I've been watching 
and oh it's called it's on netflix right now it's apocalypse something and <clears throat> it's like talking about my ice age isn't as in me man and i'm and i and i'm just like it doesn't matter how much money you have or whatever whatever it's it's cool it's good it's whatever but i don't know what the key is but for me it's just being present right now mm, being present within where i'm at within my mm. community meaning my kids and family mm. right like there's no issue with having all of these other things there's nothing wrong with all of it but mm. like like it's weird like this show like it, i'm sorry but like the show that i've been watching it's talking about beyond beyond what we know the ice ages of like like when you think about the thousands of years we've been <laughs> on earth with all of these crazy things but for me it's like some of the things that we matter about don't really matter do you know what i mean but yeah that's i feel you i feel you no i go i mean i go um <laughs> when you said being present in the moment and it feels like the answer if unlocking creative excellence was a question uh which it wasn't it was a a tabletop discussion but if it was a question the answer would be being present in the moment so thank you for coming with the with the answers queen mother i feel like i must power your feet stop that <laughs> absolutely now um some people on social media also mm -hmm. interacted uh when they found out that you're going to be on the show mm -hmm. yeah because mm -hmm. everybody loves you <laughs> award winning Stop. actress you <laughs> a follower on my twitter at fitzy africa said that the key to unlocking creative excellence is collaboration collaboration find your tribe of creatives who can give you honest feedback make sure you reciprocate we are all busy but it goes a long way for someone to take some time to go through what you've created and give you honest feedback mm -hmm. so tell me what do you think um at bitsy africa here is talking about having a tribe mm -hmm. and collaboration do you have a tribe when it comes to your artistry i would say i do <clears throat> in terms of acting um things is people that I trust. I'll send like audition tapes in the Zinjalo or we'll see what do you think and all of that. So I do believe it is important to def definitely have a tribe that will tell you. But the thing is, are we open to critique? Mm. You know what I mean? It's like are we open to as in music or instead of them saying, "Oh, you're great, you're good." And all you just want to hear yes. So. like people just want to hear yes um it reminds me of the um, the actor studio and how it was founded in 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 hollywood all those decades ago yeah and if 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 south africa would get an actor studio template it would change the type of work we do it really yeah. would I um that. let's start an actor studio yeah i'm serious should you Yeah, actually I'm serious. Let's be co-founders of a South African actor studio. Yes. Are you in? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> we're actor doing it. Studio actor studio. Africa. And we're just about making the work happen. Yeah? Yeah. I'm with you. And I do also give props to the people that are doing the most yeah as well and we bring in terms, them in yeah and we bring them in exactly i'm really proud yeah tell me who are your favorite south african actors not favorite actually who do you think is like the pinnacle of like creative excellence in south african actors ongathi i lenza ishayi world class <laughs> don't kill me I would say with, with, with why would I kill you? Don't. 
I will say Mutusi, Mokane. Mm. One, have to agree. one of my favorite. Yes. Actually, yes. my favorite. Not even one of I have my to favorite. Agree. Yeah. I love Mutusi. I do. I do. Um, let me tell you why I love Mutusi. The reason why I love Mutusi <laughs> is because um, being a 22 year old shooting with this actor, first of all, Mutusi didn't have ego or as in easy. Mutusi took me in and just was just there. Mm. He has that energy. I have worked with other actors where it's about ego, as in easy and door and whatever. But Mutusi was so like, there's nobody in it like it. And that is why I love Mutusi. Even now on Black Sams or whatever, like Mutusi is just like. Love, love of my life artistically. <laughs> Chicken licking. Did you see chicken licking? Killed it. Killed it. <laughs> like was it smooth? Like <laughs> smooth. Yeah. yeah, I think it was smooth. Yeah. But chicken lick, like, that is Mutusi. And Artist, what a thespian. You and I can agree on that, and I love that. Um, Mushidi. Mucheho. Mucheho. Like, she's a thespian. I love her. Thespians. Um, <laughs> we actually agreed on that. They're also on my top. Yeah. On my top two. Yes. Mm. I love her. Uh, we have at uh -huh. NG Kwamongwe on Instagram saying, I believe Africa is rich and thrives with creativity in various industries. I love how brands are starting to collaborate with local artists and support them. I believe we started unlocking creative excellence. A lot of people struggle with how to bring ideas to life, but the internet holds so much information and with research and knocking on the right doors with patience, Africa will be the hub of creative excellence. Now I must ask you, as an actor, you yourself in the industry, do you feel that the work that we create is of a high international standard? And if not, where do you think we fall? Oh, <laughs> sips wine. Are we not of a high international standard for you? Not even myself. Um, I feel Ugoti. <laughs> um, <clears throat> shit. <laughs> Say, this is Wine Wednesdays with Tishi. Okay, okay, let me, let me. This is a safe let space. Me, let me put it like this. This is a safe space. Let me put it like this. Okay, cool. <clears throat> we have amazing actors, for sure. However, um, mm. I think within the storytelling and directing is what, from an actor's perspective, is what makes us stand. Are we of international standard? Of course we are, in terms of we can be. But there's just a lot of things, man. There's just a lot of dynamics involved to say, like, I can't be like another actor who can train whatever, whatever. Like, we have African problems. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we do. But we can't always make excuses of that. But within storytelling, what lets us down as actors is that we are willing to go the way. But it's within the writing and the directing that mm. what's the word? False flag. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing a Sunday like yeah, there's a pie exactly. that does that. Yes. When you put it in the oven, uh, a souffle. Whatever. When the souffle exactly. uh, yeah. Um, and I think it all comes back to funding when you speak about uh, writing and directing. We've got funding. Because um, what happens with American shows or British shows or European shows is that you have two years of, of development in this country, and I'm saying this as a writer as well. Um, we get six weeks. So pit six weeks of six development. Six weeks and two years. And two years. Definitely. Unfortunately, that's what it is. We know that. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to build us an empire. Are you? This is my promise. Azaria said, I'm very interested in unlocking creative excellence as I'm learning how much of it is unlocking my connection with God, 
spirit, source, whatever you call it. What I am aligned with, when I am aligned with the Most High, creatively I just flow beautifully and fully. Anytime I've been blocked, it's spiritual as much as it's psychological. Azaria Zulu! <laughs> we'll be in touch with you about getting you your bottle of Suela wines. Thank you for sharing with that. Uh, sharing that with us, uh, we've been having a bit of wine. Um, that was actually very inspiring for me. I think it was for you as well. It made me also introspect about my spiritual connection with my creativity. So thank you for that. Levels upon levels upon levels upon levels. <laughs> blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Yes. Thank you thank for coming. You. I love you. And wine. Wednesdays with Tishiwe on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tishiwe Zitobu. Follow me on Instagram at Tishiwe. Follow me on Twitter at Tishiwe Zitobu. We got so much shit lined up for you. Beautiful, beautiful experiences around Wine Wednesdays with Tishiwe. You don't want to miss out on the boat cruise. You don't want to be that guy in December <laughs> that was like, oh, where were you guys? <laughs> No, we were at the boat cruise, motherfucker. We were drinking some wine. <laughs> Bubbly. Solar wine. wine. I love you. We love you. Hey.